Hey folks, my name is Jen, and, uh, welcome. Welcome. I, uh, I bought some more books, so, yeah. So a couple of these I will have already mentioned. Um, the first of which is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by uh, Shannon Chakraborty. This was one of the books that I have been looking for at um, the bookstore and they did not have it in stock so I ended up ordering it online and it is about a retired pirate captain uh, getting pulled back onto the seas in a big adventure. Basically, she has been pulled back into piracy uh, in the hopes of saving a daughter, I believe, of one of her old comrades who has been kidnapped. So things, things get crazy from there. Very excited to read this. I think I have this slated as a summer read. I'm super jazzed about it. The other thing uh, that I got that I kind of mentioned, or I mentioned it, probably my January wrap up that will be coming out first is volume three of The Adventure Zone, Pedals to the Metal. Um, because I got home after grabbing volumes four and five from the store and realized that I didn't in fact own volume three. Uh, so I ended up ordering this online as well. And uh, yeah, so I just grabbed that. And then I have another stack here. Well, okay. So one of these was a pre-order and then the others, there's, there's reasons. Okay, so the first of these, the pre-order, was Amulet Volume 9 by Kazu Kibuishi. This is the last, the final volume of Amulet. It is called Wave Rider. I was so excited because I don't know if you guys were around or if you remember in 2022, I read the series, really enjoyed it, but also hated the fact that the ninth volume wasn't out yet and nobody seemed to have any updates on it and what was going on. Well, I had the notification come up on Goodreads like, I don't know, a couple of months ago that, hey, guess what? Uh, volume 9 is actually out and it's going to be coming out in early February 2024 and I screamed a lot. I, uh, as soon as I saw that, I pre-ordered it and yeah, got it, got it in the mail. Was super jazzed. I am probably going to do a reread of this series. I am really want to see how things end, so I might try to do a reread of everything and then finish things this month. But I'm also afraid that it's going to put me in like a reading slump when I have a lot of other things I'm trying to get th through. So I don't know, I might try to save it for March. I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm very excited about that. And then the other books that I bought, well, okay. So <laughs> I do have one other book one extra book that is not here to mention, um, which it's, I'm not going to get it until what, April or May, I think, because I pre-ordered it, but I know I'm probably, it's going to come up again. I'll talk about it at some point too, because I will have forgotten that I mentioned it all in this, in this haul, but, um, it is a poetry collection. It's called Poems, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, and it is by Len Penny. Um, she makes videos online. I follow her on Instagram and I like watching her videos. She does videos on uh, a couple of different things, but most of them involve language, specifically like the Scots language, and she'll introduce um, a slang term and 
like use it in a sentence, explain what it means, and pronounce it for you and have you like try to pronounce and stuff like that. And I find the Scots language to be really fascinating and it's just fun. Oftentimes her videos are just, they're just all around fun and sometimes really funny. And she also shares some of her poetry sometimes. And she had said, I think a few months ago, that she had written a poetry collection. And I ended up pre-ordering that, so that will be coming again later in the spring. Then we have this, a small stack that is right here. One of these, well all of these actually, they're all born out of stress. Um, I was stressed and I bought books and what else do you need to know really? <laughs> the first of these was when I was kicking around CVS looking for Valentine's chocolate and I grabbed a Stephen King because I saw that there. Um, obviously. Uh, so this is Night Shift and it, I think it says it's his first collection of stories. I think that tracks. I think this, yeah, this is his first short story collection. I'm pretty jazzed about this because, I mean, I have plans to pretty much read and own the majority of his books anyway. So just finding one in the wild that I haven't read was exciting. And then <laughs> I have some other things that I I picked up. Uh, so the first of which was I was on Etsy and <laughs> I was looking at some other stuff because I was trying to, I'm trying to be like nicer to myself this year. And instead of stressing over the last couple of months of the year about like Christmas presents and stuff like that. I've decided that throughout the year I'm just gonna squirrel things away when I see them or think of them. So I was doing a little bit of that. Um, doing a little bit of looking and shopping for other people. And I had a notification come up on my Etsy about, hey you might be interested in this, and I was indeed. Um, and it was old secondhand copy of Agatha Christie books, and this is a Fontana book. I really like how easily floppy this thing is. But yeah, this is an old vintage copy of The Mirror Crack from Side to Side, which I thought that I've read this before possibly, but I, I looked at the description and I have no memory of this. So I'm thinking maybe I confused it with They Do It With Mirrors. I'm thinking that's what I did. I confused the two books, but yeah. So I grabbed this and this is Miss Marple Mystery, uh, Murder Again Comes to St. Mary Mead. This actress, like a famous fil ah, film actress, sees a murder, or she sees something violent happen and then there's like a dead body in her house and suspicion and stuff like that is basically what this sounds like which did not sound familiar to me at all so I'm like okay I probably haven't read this one but I think this would be a fun little mystery and then I have some other <laughs> few other books that I got uh, so first of all I grabbed a couple of poetry collections uh, one of these is Good Poems for Hard Times, and this is selected, selected and introduced by Garrison Keillor. I have Good Poems, um, just your standard collection. I did not know that this particular one existed, um, so when I saw that I was like, oh, that's cool. So, uh, yep, grab this collection. Um, I started reading this already. Um, got like, I don't know, 10 poems in or something. Also, so I shared this on my Instagram story. This is like, I really like when I find little treasures in secondhand books. It's something that I really love about secondhand books, like finding, uh, I found, found press flowers, I found little cards with poems on them, I found drawings, I found bookmarks, you know, I find random things in there. And occasionally I'll find like 
somebody's book plate or their name or a couple of names and sometimes inscriptions. And I always kind of wonder about the inscriptions, but then a lot of the times I figure, oh, well, that's from the 60s. You know, maybe they've passed and their kids didn't know what to do, didn't want this book and they got rid of it or, you know, whatever happened. There's explanations for it. I, I have a book that's got like an inscription from like the 20s or something. And it's like, well, obviously people probably aren't, you know, the people who cared about it probably are not around anymore. So, but this actually, this is the first time one's actually made me kind of sad. It's an inscription in here from 2008. I'm just kind of like, what happened guys? Ouch. The other poetry collection that I grabbed is The Trouble with Poetry and Other Poems by Billy Collins. Uh, Billy Collins is one of my favorite poets and I had not seen this before. Uh, the bear on it obviously attracted to me, it to me first. Uh, and then I saw, oh hey, this is my Billy Collins. Obviously I need this in my life. So yeah. Um, also had not heard of this one before. Um, I know his, you know, his others, Nine Horses, Sailing Alone Around the Room. I think that's my favorite collection of his. And then I also have a couple of other, his other collections. Um, the Rain in Portugal is also really good. So, you know, I've known those before, but hadn't heard about this one before. So, um, I think this will be pretty good too. Then a couple of other things. So one is I was looking for some Dumas. I was trying to find Dumas by the same translator, uh, the Three Musketeers, and could not find it. Um, so I think I might, I don't know, I got that original like one from Barnes and Noble, so I'm guessing maybe I'll have to look for that specific one on Barnes and Noble's site or something. I don't know, guys. But basically, I was just looking for other stuff that he's written because I know it's the Three Musketeers, I know it's the Count of Monte Cristo, and I know like there's a couple of other uh, adventure type books he'd, he'd done before. And then I saw this. <laughs> it is From Absinthe to Zest, an alphabet for food lovers. It's just a simple little book that's literally a food dictionary. And it's Alexandre Dumas going through all of these food items or dishes like absinthe or wormwood, anchovy, anise, apricot, beans, bear. I don't think I want to read about bear though. Cake, all different types of cake. Um, you know, various things like that. And he's just like discussing the dishes and how they're prepared or like information about them and stuff like that. And it's just basically a, a fun little book about that because apparently he was an extremely talented cook himself and considered himself to be a gourmand and which I did not know. So, uh, yeah, that's, pretty cool and also very random so I imagine this is just gonna be like a fun thing that I squeeze in between some of my other reads just because I feel like it. Then I also I grabbed a couple of other books from other authors that I really love so one of these is North Country A Personal Journey Through the Borderland by Howard Frank Mosher. Howard Frank Mosher is one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, he was a Vermont author and he wrote a couple of my favorite books and just his books are always like so beautiful, like very touching, very funny, full of very quirky, uh, funny characters and the descriptions that he has of like people and places in Vermont in general is just so gorgeous. This book is actually a nonfiction, and I have another nonfiction of his, um, Unread on My Shelves, which is about, also it, this is about a journey. The other one's also about a journey, but they're two very different journeys. So this one, to celebrate, it sounds like his 50th birthday, he set off 
on a journey following America's northern border from coast to coast. And so this is basically about his experience. And I think, I don't think it was him by himself. I think he went with his wife. But they basically, they just explored the northern border of the country from like Maine. I think it's, well, he might have started in Vermont, but I think it's, it says coast to coast. So I'm assuming from Maine to all the way to like, my God, guys, I'm so bad at geography. Washington, right? Yes. Um, so, no, Oregon. No, Washington. Washington. Okay. So it's <laughs> out in that general direction. And so that's really fascinating. And the other book I have of his is also about a journey, but it's about uh, a road trip that he took um, as part of, like, I believe it's like press or something for a book that he'd written. And then he'd also just found out he'd been diagnosed with cancer. So uh, that's a very different journey than what th this sounds like. I also have a goal to like read and own all of his, the books that he's ever written as well because I just love his writing so much. So uh, <laughs> I've added yet another nonfiction book to my shelves. Fuck off. I have a problem. And the last book that I got, I'm, I'm really... I'm pretty jazzed about. Uh, so I revisited Slaughterhouse Five last year, and really, it feels weird to say you enjoyed something that's about like the horrors of war. Kurt Vonnegut's writing is just something else, like beautiful and satirical and fucking heartbreaking. It, it's crazy. So. I've been wanting to read more of his stuff. I'm reading um, a writing book that is by one of his former students, but is chock full of like his writing advice and stuff like that. And I'm just really loving it. He seemed like he was such a, a cool dude. So I've really been wanting to read more of his books. And I was actually kind of like looking around online about where is a good place to go with Vonnegut once you've read like Slaughterhouse Five or what's a good place to start with Vonnegut and most people say Slaughterhouse Five and it's like well I already I, I read that one already or they suggest like uh, a couple of others everyone seems to have like a different opinion about what a good one would be so because everyone seemed to have a differing opinion for the most part on what a good place with to go with Vern Vonnegut was. Uh, I decided to just, I found like this grandmaster list of his works and stuff and like a reading of them or whatever. And I looked through the, the like descriptions about what the book's about. And this one was the one that I got the most excited about. So it's the one that I grabbed. Uh, and that is God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater. So this is about a man named Elliot Rosewater and he's kind of like a layabout um, and it's kind of, uh, I don't know what is the right way to just, yeah, layabout, I guess is the thing. He, he just kind of does, he's a drunk and he just kind of does whatever and he also happens to be like the, I think it's the president or heir of like this very rich company or foundation or whatever and he decides one day that he is going to do a experiment and the experiment sounds like he is going to take a town and basically just throw a bunch of fucking money at this town and try to like help it and bring it up and help a whole bunch of people and stuff like that and it sounds like really funny like this is touted as being a comic masterpiece but it also sounds like it has elements of stuff that I'm I really kind of like like elements of stories that I enjoy like a little bit of Ebenezer Scrooge at the end of A Christmas Carol or a little bit of uh, 
It's a Wonderful Life, but in this version, Mr. Potter's not a heartless dickbag. He's maybe a good guy, or at least has good intentions or something. Like, that kind of thing. It's very fascinating. So, this is the one that I got the most excited about, and I'm gonna pick this up. I don't know when. I'm kind of jonesing to hop into this soon, but like I said, I do have other things that I already had slotted for my February, and I also have a couple of books that I really need to get through because I still need to, like, come out with my, uh, favorite classics of all time video. So, um, yeah, I need to get on things, but I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping to pick this one up soon because I'm just like, I'm really jonesing to read some more Vonnegut right now. And... Hey, so it's Future Gen with one more book, um, because my brother had ordered me a book, but it took forever to like get here. And I just saw him like last weekend and he gave it to me. So um, I just had one more book to haul uh, and that was The Enchanted Sonata and it is by Heather Dixon Walwork. Um, this is a Nutcracker retelling. Pretty excited about it. I've heard really good things about this. Of course, I will most likely save this for like December of this year, so this will not be an anytime soon read, but I'm still like wicked jazzed about it. So yeah, back to past gen. Anyway guys, this is everything that I recently purchased. Um, because again, I have no self-control. But you, you knew, I knew that, you knew that, we all knew that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed. If you've read any of these before, let me know down below. No spoilers as per usual. Um, if there's any that you think sound pretty cool or you want to like prod me to, hey, you should read that sooner rather than later because I want to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know that too. And yeah, I'm very pretty, pretty jazzed, pretty jazzed with all my, my new little friends here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for always watching. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, please consider doing so. I hope you all are having a great week, weekend, wherever you're currently at, and I will see you guys next time.